Evangelii Gaudium is Pope Francis's first apostolic exhortation. The letter addressed to the people of God was published on November the 24th, 2013, just six months after his election as Pope. This document is key to understanding his pontificate. In this apostolic exhortation, Pope Francis sets a very clear direction for the church, a direction that must be paramount and shape the entire church. And that direction is evangelization, the mission. Gonzalo de la Morena, a theologian at the Pontifical University of the Holy Cross, noted that the exhortation responded to the historical context of the church at the time it was published and gave a renewed impetus to the faithful. We are talking about the year 2013, when a month earlier, for the first time in nearly a thousand years, a Pope had resigned under circumstances perceived as a major crisis for the Universal Church, particularly the Roman Curia. There may have been a sense of discouragement within the Church at all levels. Then Pope Francis arrives and, with this encyclical, issues a powerful call to reignite the enthusiasm for the Church's mission, the mission Christ entrusted to it, to evangelize, to proclaim, with all the joy that Christ has risen and that Christ is the Savior. The message of Evangelii Gaudium ranges from a call to transform the Church into one that goes forth to meet those in need of the Gospel to an analysis of the social dimension of evangelization and concludes with a reminder that the strength of the missionary endeavor must come from a personal encounter with Christ, a true and intimate conversion. As the Pope states in the first point of the encyclical, in this exhortation, I wish to address the Christian faithful and invite them to a new evangelizing phase marked by joy and to outline paths for the church's journey in the years to come. With these words, the newly elected pontiff sets the map for his pontificate. In the text, he expresses his desire for lay people to be active agents of evangelization. His aim to integrate the entire people of God aligns with the constitution Lumen Gentium, which emphasizes that the role of lay people in the church is not secondary, but that each one is part of the evangelizing mission. La Evangelii Gaudium. Evangelii Gaudium draws heavily from Lumen Gentium. Essentially, it activates principle that were declared in Lumen Gentium but need to be translated into the life of the Church. In the apostolic exhortation, Pope Francis also lists ecclesial challenges that hinder the Church from carrying out its mission in the world. The Pope explains that the Church acknowledges the indispensable contribution of women in society, but that there is still a need to broaden the space for a more incisive female presence in the Church. The Pope wants lay people, both men and women, to be visibly active agents. This is clearly seen in his pontificate and especially in the matter of synodality. This is also where the possibility of exploring the role of women in the Church comes in. Because Pope Francis has often stated, and it is clear in Evangelii Gaudium, that he neither wants nor can allow women to be ordained as priests because the Pope is not the owner or master of the church. In point 103, the Pope acknowledges that women share pastoral responsibilities with priests, contribute to accompanying individuals, families or groups, and bring new contributions to theological reflection. In the text, the Pope issues a call for unity, no war among ourselves. With this, he invites everyone to focus on the mission of evangelization rather than on polarization within the Church. The Holy Father emphasizes that the renewed missionary drive comes from evangelizers who pray and work. Point 262. Neither mystical proposals without strong social and missionary commitment nor social or pastoral discourses and practices without a spirituality that transforms the heart are useful. In missionary spirituality, there must be a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, and these translates into a life of prayer and a life centered on the Eucharist. It cannot remain merely an intimate matter. That encounter 
must also have a communal dimension. También su dimensión comunitaria. Pope Francis concludes the apostolic exhortation by reminding us that the church urgently needs the breath of prayer and invites the faithful to avoid a false spirituality.